Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Just got done testing the Gale Force F3 series, 8 inch and 6 inch coax carbon fiber mid range drivers. Um, excellent build quality. Uh, put the speaker through its test. It sounds different than any of the other speakers we've tested. It's not a good thing or a bad thing, it's just different. Um, there was things that I expected to see on the RTA that were in different places, but that's because they've taken a different approach. And um, this is their weatherproof speakers, series of speakers. So most of the coax horn loaded drivers that we test have a W surround. Um, these are rubber surround. So rubber surround speakers obviously make them more weatherproof, but it does affect the way the speaker sounds in place. Um, speakers with rubber surround are known to have more mid bass and these do, but that also affects the mid range. So it's not a good or a bad thing. It's know what you're looking for in the sound of the speaker before you pick a speaker, whether it's this speaker or any other speaker. Uh, speaker had excellent mid bass. Obviously it's weatherproof. Um, the horn cone is made out of metal for you guys that care and it unscrews. It is removable in case you want to modify and drill the holes in the center or get them custom painted. It is removable. Threaded aluminum. These speakers performed well. They handled a ton of power. Um, the owner of the company actually didn't believe that they would fit in street glide or road glide pods, and they do. It does require a good amount of cutting, but as you can see, we have the speaker loaded in a street glide pod right there. Um, we tested in the road glide pod too, and it fits. You have to open up the round part of the ring, and you have to cut out a rectangle in the plastic part. We didn't show that in this video, I was trying to keep the video short, but I will show it in another video if you want me to. But there's the Street Glide pod, modified, speaker installed, and playing. I like to test motorcycle speakers in motorcycle pods because that's where you're going to be using them. And for this video, I'm the Harley Audio guy, they shipped me the speakers, so obviously they wanted me to test them to see how they would sound on a Harley, so we test them in the Street Glide pod. Um, these speakers hold an unbelievable amount. So, once you put a rubber surround on the speaker, it lowers the efficiency of the speaker. Gives you more mid bass, but it requires more power to make the speaker move. So these speakers did not have a high efficiency. I didn't test the efficiency, but I know it's not that high because it required a insane amount of power to move them. By insane, I mean most people run 100, 150 watts to speaker. On low power, we tested the six and a half on 400 watts. And then on high power, we tested it on 1200 watts. So we ran, Test bench, I have a bunch of sound digital amps on the test bench. The horn we ran on 400.4. The mid bass driver, the six inch woofer, we ran on an 804 bridge, which gave us 400 watts to the six and a half woofer. And then we moved it over to a 2404 bridge, which gave us 1200 watts across that same woofer. So um, you're not running these speakers on 100 watts. I'm sorry. Well, in my opinion, 100 watts, not enough. So two, three, four, five, six hundred watts is where you want to be with these speakers. Um, so price on the speakers on the six and a half is four hundred eighty dollars a pair. Price on the eights is five hundred thirty dollars a pair. So I'm really impressed with uh, Alan Palmer. Anytime I ask him a question, he gets back to me within ten minutes. So. Uh, Every company that sends me speakers, I already know where I'm going to test them at, but I like to know what the company recommends, and I like to know if they know what they're talking about. I was very impressed with Alan's answers. So I asked him where he recommends I start testing the speakers. So his answer was, I recommend three to 400 watts RMS uh, is our general recommendation on power for the woofer, crossed over from 120 to 150 hertz on the low side and on the high end from 6,000 to 8,000 hertz, 24 decibel slope. The horn, we recommend 50 to 125 watts RMS based on the crossover and the desired sound. Very smart answer. We've had good results crossing over as low as 1,500 hertz on low power and 3,000 hertz at high power. That tells me that this man knows what he's talking about because people tell you that a speaker handles X amount of power, but if they don't tell you where they crossed it over at, at what slope, with how much power applied, those numbers are really irrelevant. So when we cross over a speaker and we cross it over and we need it to play louder, we would cross it over higher. Whether it's, So if it's a speaker you have at 80 hertz and you want to run way more power to it, then you'd cross it over 120 or 150 hertz. It's common sense to make sure the speaker doesn't explode. 
Being that he knows that means he's played these speakers, he understands these speakers, he knows what he's doing. So we had the best results. Uh, and you also have to remember, we tested them in the pod. So in the pod, um, Mr. Wonderful was helping me with the tune, and uh, we came up with the best results. Tweeters, 12 decibel per octave, link with Riley, 5,000 hertz and up. Mid-bass drivers, band passed, 120 hertz to 3,000 hertz, 12 dB per octave, link with Riley, and with no EQ applied, it sounded pretty damn good. Um, so, speakers are uh, weatherproof. Um, I asked about the warranty. They said, one year warranty, any manufacturer defect, one year warranty, no questions asked, over the counter exchange. Um, if the speaker's been played and a voice call's been burnt or a speaker's been poked, they give you a one year unconditional rebuild warranty, which is pretty cool. So even if it's your fault, they will fix it. You only have to pay for the parts. You don't have to pay for the labor. You don't even have to pay for return shipping. So they will rebuild both parts of the speaker for $80. They rebuild the tweeter and they'll rebuild the woofer. Even if you poke a hole in the woofer or do something that's completely your fault, no, just a flat fee of $80. You ship it to them and they'll ship it back to you for free after you pay the $80 for the parts to rebuild. That's that's a pretty good damn warranty. So uh, pros of the speaker. They actually fit street glide, road glide pods. You have to heavily modify the pods. So you have to open up the opening and you have to shave the inside of the street glide. So on the street glide, you don't have to cut the pod, but you do have to shave all the ribs on the inside a decent amount because it's a pretty deep speaker. On the road glide, um, you have to cut a four by four inch opening on the side of the pod and then uh, rotate the speaker and it fits in. Not any different of these high power coaxes from any of these other companies. Um, the speakers had really good mid bass. They played at least 20 dB, 20 dB lower than most of the pro audio coax speakers we've tested. And that's largely due to the way they chose to construct it with the rubber surround. So the rubber surround most speakers with a rubber surround just will naturally have more mid bass, but it also lowers the efficiency and makes the speaker require more power. So it's a trade off. Um, they chose to go with more mid bass and more weatherproof and uh, lower efficiency. That's not good or bad. That's just something they chose to do. And you have to see if this works for you. If you're choosing a speaker that has more mid bass and less mid range, if you're choosing a speaker that you need to be more weatherproof, that's completely up to you. Um, The staff is very, very knowledgeable. So any question that I asked, he was able to answer. Um, he gave me recommended crossover points. He gave me recommended power, where most places when you call, they'll just read from the owner's manual. So um, I've hit him with a few questions. He's been answer, able to answer all of them, and the product performed exactly as he said it would. So uh, knowledgeable staff is definitely a big plus in my book. Now, some of the cons, some of the negatives. You have to modify the pod. No big deal with every coax for this size, you have to modify the pod. I was a little disappointed that it did not include crossovers or at least capacitors. So I think this is going to be a problem for them because if you don't include capacitors in the box, one, clients won't know what cap to use. Two, they're going to assume that it doesn't need a cap, hook up the tweet without protection and blow it up. Um, there was no recommended spec sheet in the box. It had the parameters. So you can load them into the software, but I'd like to see a paper with recommendations like, hey, start off with this crossover point or that crossover point. Let me show you the documentation that came in the box. So pretty basic. So these numbers on the back is what I use when I design enclosures. So these numbers aren't really for an end consumer. They're really for builders. And the numbers on the front show you the cutout diameter, mounting diameter, the weight of the speaker, RMS power handling of the woofer is listed as 250. RMS on the tweeter is listed as 100 watts. Max power for the woofer is listed at 500 watts. Max power for the tweeter is 200 watts. Tells you what the cone's made out of. It's got a nice 2-inch voice coil for the woofer and a 1.5 for the tweeter. Just so you know, 2-inch voice coil on a 6-inch woofer is big. Um, and it's got the SPL listed as 92. Told you, it's lower end sensitivity for a pro audio driver. And on the tweeter 106, which is pretty loud. Uh, it's got frequency response listed at 80 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which is uh, 
in line with what we tested. I uh, think the 80 hertz could be a little lower considering that we crossed them over at 120 and did well. So you normally cross over at double the FS. FS is normally the lower number. So they're showing 80. So I'm saying that the FS of the speaker is probably closer to 60. So when you double it, it comes up to the 120. But um, I would really like to see another added sheet with recommended crossover points or capacitor value to use. It's just going to keep people from blowing the speaker up. But um, one quick phone call um, over to these guys or a quick message on Messenger. You will have all your information. I know because I did it and they got back to me in 10 minutes and gave me all the specs that I was looking for. Um, it's not a complete line. This is a brand new company. They started this company with all their own money. It's not like they have millions of dollars of financing from a bigger company. So they can only afford to start with two part numbers and they did it the smart way. Most of these bikes that we build get coax speakers. So they started with the most popular size and style, which is 6.5 inch coax, which every bike can fit in the fairing. And then they went with an eight inch coax for lids. So they wanted to get their feet wet and come out with product that's usable right away. So they went with the two most popular part numbers. It would be a coax, high powered, um, weatherproof, carbon fiber cone, six and a half and eight inch. But they said they will be coming up. They're working on drop and fit six by nines, six and a halves, um, stuff that's gonna come a pair in a box. It's gonna be at a lower price point. It's gonna be more drop and fit and they have amplifiers and woofers that they're working on that will be coming very soon. Um, these speakers require a ton of power. So um, if you're looking at a speaker like this, just know it's gonna be a higher performance speaker, which in order to make it do what you want it to do, you're not gonna do it with 100 or 200 watts. They're gonna want three, four, 500 watts plus. And that's what we realize in our test. We weren't really happy with the output at um, at 400 watts. It sounded good, but it, you could tell the speaker could do more. So we moved it to the 2404 and bridged it. And I would never recommend running this much power, but on the test bench, we have an 804, 2404, 1601, and 5000.1. So we had 400 watts available, 600 watts available, and 1200 watts available. So I just chose, so I didn't have to rewire the amp. I just chose to run it on 1200 watts. I was conservative with my gain and the speaker took it like a champ. I definitely do not recommend running these speakers on 1200 watts each, but um, to each his own. So I recommend the speaker, comes in at a good price point, 500 bucks for a pair of high power six and a half is decent. Um, they did what they're supposed to do. They sound good. Um, they have, I, I really like the mid bass. Um, they're super power hungry, so I don't know if that's a, a plus or a minus for you guys. Um, uh, great tech support, but um, that's it. Enough talking. I'm going to let you listen to the speakers. So they're not a drop and fit for Street Glide pods. These are brand new, unmodified Street Glide pods. It's off by about a quarter of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and ream it out and see if we can get it to drop in there. So I knew, come here, cough. I knew I was going to be able to get in there. Rob modified the pod, pull the speaker out. So he modified the ribs on the inside of the pod and opened up the hole a little bit. So see the modification in the pod? And the speaker does drop in. So now the issue we have is that's a really thick gasket. So with the gasket laying against here, it's not going to let the speaker go in. So we're going to go ahead and remove the gasket and see if we can get this to close up. With the gasket there, it's pushing us away here by about an eighth or a quarter inch. Well, 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 well. Someone to count on in a world of change. My 
wings on cold, I'm wondering why Got out of bed at all 3.5 clouds up my window And I can't see it all And even if I could, it would all be great But these racks back up too tall It reminds me that it's not so bad It's not so bad at all because I believe the tweeter is very aggressive. So since I have the tweeter on the 400.4 and the woofer on the 1200, I'm going to pause the video real quick, make an adjustment, and bring the tweeter up like 3 dB. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 oh. 
So there you have it. Um, I tested the eight, but I just wanted to keep the video short. The eight plays exactly like the six. It just plays a little bit lower. So obviously more mid bass. It's got more cone area. But on the top end, the speakers were identical. So um, new company. I hope they do well. Um, they're building quality product. Um, they impressed me the most with their knowledge and the warranty that they're offering. Um, there's a ton of six and eight inch speakers on the market. So what I think is going to make these guys successful is the fact that they know what they're talking about and they're going to provide excellent, excellent customer service and tech support. So um, don't take my word for it. Reach out to these guys. Ask them some questions. I guarantee you, you'll be impressed. And um, if they stick true to their warranty, they're doing stuff differently than a lot of guys out there. So um, hope this review helps. Have a great night.